Now that we've finished up most of our endpoints, what we're going to do is we're going to install React so we can start coding up that front end and making it look all pretty and hooking everything up and making it actually work. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Create React App because it is the best way to start out a new uh, React application. We might, I doubt it, but it's possible to make a, I had some videos on like Webpack and how you would actually structure it without Create React App. But I honestly believe that Create React App is the best way to do React applications. It's just so simple to set up and Facebook has created, or whoever, I'm pretty sure Facebook made Create React App, but anyway, Create React App is bar none the best way to start. So that's what we're gonna do. If you don't have Create React App installed, you're gonna do npm install dash g, Dash G is the global NPM. Like it, there you have a node modules folder globally, and you're gonna do NPM install dash G create hyphen React hyphen app. I've already got it, so I'm not gonna install it again. Uh, you're gonna wait for that to install. Feel free to pause the video if that takes a little bit. So after you do that, we're gonna create the app. So we're gonna do create. We're gonna make sure that we're in our directory. So print working directory, which is PWD, and you can see that I'm in my node to do. I'm gonna clear it up. And we're just going to create hyphen react hyphen app. And then we're going to do client. So this will take a second. But what is going to happen here is we're going to have two separate folders. So or we're going to have a folder within our server folder. So we have our node to do and all of our routes, our database, and our index file. And then we're going to have a subfolder in that called client. And what client is going to do is it's going to house all of our UI. So as you can see, now we're done. We can go into CD client, and you can see we have our entire create React app application here. We can actually do npm run start here, and it will actually start up our React server. Beautiful. So now that it's started up our React server, or we need to be able to start them both at the same time because we're going to want to be able to actually run, you know, our server and our client at the same time because we've got to be able to test back and forth, right? So what we're going to have to do is, as you can tell, we actually have a separate package.json file here. We can look at this package.json file, and it's not the same one that we have in our server. We have a completely separate package.json file in our server. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back out to our server. So we're going to cd back a directory, and we're going to clear it out. And then we're going to look at our package.json here. So right now we have a server which is going to run nodeman index.js. So we need another client. So we need to run the client, right? So to run the client, we're going to do npm run start. Well, that's not very useful because if we're in this directory, it's going to try and run this start script, right? So all you have to do is add a prefix of client. So basically that says, hey, in the client directory, there is going to be another package.json file, run that npm run start. And that's how you run App, uh, run React applications. So we're going to give that a shot. We're going to do npm run start. Ah, I called it client, not start. npm run client. And as you can see, it's starting up our React server, and we're back in action. So we can go into WebStorm. We can actually pull this bad boy up. You can see that my client folder took a second to come up, but there it is. And what we can do is we can just, you know, edit our app.js file and said welcome to react welcome to the best app ever refresh welcome to the best app ever or just the best app ever so what we've got is we have the ability to start our client and our server well we want to start both at the same time i don't want to have to run you know open this then create a new tab you know cd into the directory no we don't want to do that so we're going to break this and we're going to install something called concurrently. So concurrently is going to allow us to run two separate, pretty much any commands at the same time. So we're going to do npm install dash dash save dev because we don't need this in production concurrently. So what concurrently I said is going to allow us to do is to run two different uh, commands at the same time. So we're going to run npm run client, npm run server, both at the same time. So we're going to vim, in, or I'm going to vim, and I'm going to open up my package.json. Ooh, this really bothers me back here. Let's switch that bad boy to React. Ooh, 
go away. Sorry, really bothered me that there's a lot red in the background. So what we've got here is we've got our npm run test server client. So we're actually going to do npm run start. And we're going to say, we're going to say concurrently. So we're going to have to add two backslash quotes. So what that does, that escapes the, the backslash. So on the command or in your bash, you would just type concurrently this and then this wrapped in double quotes. Well, if you just, you know, didn't do the backslash double quotes, as you can see, that's throwing some errors. So you just want to escape those. So we're going to concurrently npm run server. And then you're going to do it again, backslash out or escape to quote uh, double quotes. And we're going to npm run client. So that's pretty much all we need. And now if we do npm run start, you can see, uh oh, we have an issue. Something's already running a port 3000. By default, React, create React app servers, run a port 3000. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're just going to change our uh, app.listen to port 8000. So now we're going to try it again, npm run start. We can see that our React server booted up. And we can also, we can see that our client server booted up and we can see that our Nodeman server booted up. So our, we have our local host 3000. And we also have our local host 8000. Oh, that's 3000. We have our local host 8000 slash API slash to do, and we're still getting that back as well. So everything is going perfect right at, right at this point. So I want to say that this is pretty much all that this video is going to cover, but I do want to make one quick change. Whenever I initially created our to do table, we didn't put a primary key on it. Whoopsie. I just made it a a serial. So if I go into PSQL, I'm going to connect to node or what was it? To do DB. And now I select star from to do. We see that we have, you know, our ID. Well, this isn't the primary key. We need to add the primary key. So we're going to do an alter table to do. Or no, it's not. Yeah, it's just to do add primary key on ID. Whoops, forgot my open and close parens. I'm too used to SQL Server every day. So what that'll do is that'll create a primary key on our ID. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, we are going to quickly move into creating our application. So we're going to set up some simple UI and then we're going to actually start posting back to our API and getting all of our stuff, listening on the screen, and then doing simple CRUD application in it. And then we're going to be done with our simple API. And then we'll move on to some different topics as opposed to just, you know, creating simple to-do application. We'll expand on this application and hopefully make it a decent, not only looking, but a decent functional um, to-do application. I'll see you guys next time.